Boker Tov, Haverim. Welcome, my friends. It's time once again for a heartfelt Haftarah. Uh, we are now in the fourth of the Haftarot of Consolation, and I hope you're feeling comforted as we head towards a new year. I, your rabbi, am feeling increasingly anxious as I see the weeks go by. But in any case, uh, don't worry about me. Uh, I'm a trained professional. So um, let's talk about our Torah portion, our Haftarah portion for this week. It goes with the Torah portion, Shoftim, uh, which means judges. Uh, however, as I have pointed out for the last three weeks, uh, there is no intrinsic connection between the Torah portion and the Haftarah because these uh, Haftarot have been specifically selected uh, to bring a message of reassurance. And therefore, uh, while you can, uh, as I always say, there is a tremendous capacity to make connections uh, between ideas and in human human beings. We, we find connections all the time that maybe even the author didn't intend. But in any case, uh, right now, uh, the whole focus of the Haftarot is to make us feel better. So uh, our Haftarah for this uh, week in Shoftim is uh, Isaiah, and it's uh, 51 to 52. Let me give you the precise pages here. Um, the verses are uh, 51, verse 12 to 52, verse 12. So, uh, once again, in very, very lofty rhetoric, uh, Isaiah is talking to us about uh, what we can expect, hope for in the future uh, that is better than the exile, uh, the semi slavery the degradation that uh, our people have experienced in the past. And he is specifically talking about uh, the degradation of our, uh, our nation being destroyed, our temple leveled, and us being carried off to uh, Babylon, where, uh, given the nature of things, uh, some thrived, some didn't, uh, but all of them felt the weight of uh, the terrible events that brought them and their children uh, to uh, Babylon. So now uh, the people are returning. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, all beginnings are hard, as the Talmud likes to say. Returning to a devastated land, it's not depopulated, because uh, the uh, Babylonians really only carried off uh, the elite, the craftsmen, the skilled people, they left farmers uh, to themselves, and uh, but there was, uh, there, there was no society left. Basically, um, uh, Judea was reduced to a farming colony uh, of Babylon. And now the king of Persia, having conquered Babylon and having a different uh, policy, imperial policy has decided to send all those uh, makers and shakers uh, back to Judea, or at least those who wish to go. And it's pretty clear that there are plenty of Jews who found a place for themselves in Babylon and remain there, forming the first major diaspora population in Jewish history. So, but those who return the pioneers, the people who want to go back, uh, they have gone, and uh, it's a fearsome and fearful thing. Uh, Jerusalem is a, is a ruin and has to be rebuilt. The temple is a ruin and has to be rebuilt. And so Isaiah is carrying forward all of these messages of hope and consolation to the people. So... Um, I'm just going to quote from a very, very famous passage and uh, show you some of the heightened rhetoric uh, that Isaiah brings, his, uh, his rhetorical tool chest to help inspire us as we head into the high hold days. <laughs> My apologies there. 
So I'm going to go to the end of the um, of the Haftarah. We're going to be in a twelve seven, uh, the last five verses as we go forward. And this is a very famous line: um, "How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the herald, bringing good tidings, who proclaims peace, or possibly." Uh, a res restoration of wholeness, uh, who proclaims deliverance, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels raise their voices. Together they shout for joy. For their own eyes, they see the return of God to Zion. Break out in a peon of praiseful joy, you ruins of Jerusalem. The eternal comforts your people and rede redeems Jerusalem. The Eternal has bared the holy arm in the sight of the nations, and to all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Uh, the only uh, particular piece I want to focus on is uh, bears one arm, all right? Uh, it's an interesting phrase. Very anthropomorphic, God bears his arm, that actually harkens back uh, to the book of Exodus, even though it's not a direct uh, quotation. Uh, it alludes to Exodus, where we are told that God brings us out of Egypt with an outstretched arm and an extended hand. So uh, it invokes that same sense uh, that there is a kind of self-revelation going on with God. In terms of uh, turning it into a modern idiom, it's not unlike uh, the English way of saying uh, God is rolling up his sleeves, right? He's going to go to work for us. And so the same idea is uh, working. And uh, the idea that God exposes his arm uh, carries forth the implication of a kind of self-revelation, or a theophany is the fancy word for that. And so uh, what is the nature of God's self-revelation? Uh, that the colony, the people returning to Jerusalem and restoring the province of Judea will see success. And that because God includes this in part of his provenance and providence for uh, the Jewish people, uh, we are back. We're back. And so this in itself is, seems, should seem pretty miraculous given the fate of the Northern Kingdom, which has completely been wiped off the earth. And it also has become again and again, the assurance that while the Jews often know defeat, we are never defeated. And we ascribe that to the God of Israel, who sustains us through a very varied and sometimes very difficult history. It was true then, and I think it's true even today. And then as an aside, I'm just going to mention that many of the quotes in this particular passage from Isaiah were adopted as rhetoric uh, by the early Zionists. You can actually see a number of pre-state Zionist posters that quote Isaiah from around here, uh, assuring people that the venture of creating a Jewish state, even though there hasn't been one for two millennium, is both possible and maybe even inevitable. And so uh, this uh, rhetoric still has a resonance for us even today. So be hopeful and uh, look to better times. They will come. I think that's all I have to say for today. And I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll talk again at the next Heartfelt Haftarah. Be well, all.